for those of you who are having trouble maybe understanding or kind of discerning what it is that I've been talking about on this channel regarding what's being built, what the stage that's being set up against Christians, I want you to just listen to this for a moment. This is Kevin Sorbo, the actor, and I don't endorse any man, but I will absolutely share a testimony that I have discerned to be true. And so that's what I'm doing right here is this is Kevin Sorbo talking about the fact that he's Christian, the fact that he is speaking out on certain things and being canceled from the industry, told that he will not be represented anymore because he's a conservative and because he's Christian. And really, you know how I feel about right versus all the political propaganda. It's, it's not about him being conservative. It's about him declaring with his mouth what's in his heart. This is a spiritual issue, not a political issue. And I just uploaded a video entitled, What Will the Mark of the Beast Look Like? And I've been telling you for a while now, actually for months now, that a stage is being set against God's people, that we are being set up. This is not a conspiracy theory. We've been told that this is going to happen in the word. A stage is being set against God's people. We are being set up to look like a cult. We are being canceled. We are being marginalized, alienated. And there's going to come a time in which the Antichrist spirit is going to give kickbacks, is going to flatter, is going to reward those who violate the Holy Covenant. That's what we're told in Daniel. Those who violate the Holy Covenant and those who are speaking in congruence with God's word are going to be canceled. And you have to understand that that is what's going on right now. Don't call it cancel culture because then you misunderstand. You think that it's like a, it's a woke thing. It's a political thing. It's a whatever, whatever. God told us exactly what it is. Paul told us exactly what it is. This is a spiritual war. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You gotta understand that. You're not dealing with human beings. You are dealing with the spirit that they have chosen. There's so much credit that we give to ourselves for being good, right? So much credit that we give to ourselves for being good. And yet Paul himself said, there's no good in me, but that which is God. There's no good in me. I do the very things I don't wanna do. And so if good is coming out of you, that's from the spirit of God, it's not from you. It's because you chose to conform to the spirit of God. If there's evil coming out of you, it is because you chose to conform to a different spirit. And that spirit then begins to execute its agenda. That antichrist spirit is going to come against Christ, is going to come against God in you. The minute that people cross over from being evil into being in him, being changed by him, suddenly this starts happening. I've heard it time and again. I experienced it myself for no other reason, for no other good reason. Stuff started coming against me. People turned away. No falling out, no issues that you could point to. It simply had to do with that. For no good reason, people would turn away from Christ. Why? Because he told us exactly why. People who live in darkness don't come towards the light. I do not have any of the associ associations that I had when I was evil. I did not have, I don't have any of those associations because people who live in darkness do not come towards the light. And the reason for that is because they do not want to be exposed. That's what Christ told us. So let's listen to this interview. I want to demonstrate for you what's happening because this is real. You know, there's crazy stuff happening, but you're being peddled a false narrative, even by those who are Republican, even though by those who claim to be Christian, they make it a political thing. They don't understand what it is because they don't have truth in them because they're not speaking on the, on the word. Even those who claim to be religious, even those like Ben Shapiro, who claims to be, be religious, but also claims that he doesn't speak on that authority because other, others don't accept it. So what authority are you speaking on? The authority of man, the authority of man-made laws, the authority of the world? Because what I see when that group of people are speaking is that, first of all, they are speaking to the world. They are trying to come against evil rather than discerning the spirit in the other person. Like Christ told us, he said, discern the spirit, 
Test the spirit in the person, right? That's what John told us. Test the spirit, discern the fruit. If you test the spirit in another person and you test them to be of the devil, are you going to be able to convince the devil? Are you going to be able to convince someone who does not have the spirit of God in them of God? Are you going to be able to convince them of the things of God if you have already discerned them to have the spirit of the devil? No. I don't think I've seen like a single video, and of course I haven't seen all their videos, but I don't think I've ever seen an example of where they actually convinced someone who had the spirit of Satan that of good. It's for mere entertainment purposes only. And personally, I don't think that we should be entertained by that because really all it is is wise in your own eyes, you know, someone who's quite witty, who's quick, but who is speaking on the authority of the world and is not doing so according to the word, but keep, these people keep, you know, claiming to be religious. Jordan Peterson, Michael Knowles, Matt Walsh, they all claim to be Catholic. Ben Shapiro claiming to be religious, a religious Jew, Orthodox Jew, wears a yarmulke. But none of these people acknowledge that God's word is the only authority on anything. Is the law the authority? Human law? So what I see is that they argue the world with the world, even to the extent that I told you in a, in a different video that Matt Walsh is here arguing evolution. That's why nothing ever gets resolved. That's why nothing is ever clear. It's just a method of entertainment. And at a certain point for me, it's no longer entertainment. It's just grievous, especially when I hear them say that they're not going to argue from a theological perspective, that they're not going to speak on God's authority because they don't want to make it a religious thing. Well, what is it? Is it a political thing? Is that what we're doing here? This is a spiritual issue. For three self-proclaimed Christians to not understand that based on the word of God, to not be standing on that authority and that truth is really shameful. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's the battle. You want to understand what's going on during these times? You got to take a look at the word. You got to speak on the word and say it as the word says it rather than as the world says it. The mark of the beast, the alienation of God's people, the war on God's people is already being set up so that when the Antichrist rises, because this came out of nowhere, I mean, you're looking at it, I'm it's probably similarly to the way I'm looking at it, like what in the world is going on here. Where did this come from? What are these people saying? Why is this so insane? Why are they not consistent? Why are they spinning evil for good and good for evil? Hello? Did the word not warn us about that? There's no doubt in my mind that people think that what I'm saying is out there and it's not, and it, it's just so far off. Sure, the Bible talks about that, but that's not happening right now. It is 100% happening right now. Take a listen to what Kevin Sorbo has to say. It's crazy how the damage they can do to your career and how they can destroy people's lives right now. In 2010, there were a couple of incidents that just, I just said, okay, I've had enough of this. And I remember going back to my wife and saying, I've had enough of the hypocrisy where nobody's pointing it out. And I started getting more vocal because we had now we had all these things. Social media was starting to grow in its infancy, but we started to take off. And I started saying stuff. My wife said, you better look out. They're going to come after you. And I said, all I said was two plus two is four. I spoke the truth. That's just truth. But she was she was right. And it got to a point with my agent, who was a big time agent. I was with a long time. And my manager just said, uh, we can't represent you anymore. I said, why? Well, because you're conservative and you're a Christian and you're, and I was like, what? And I said, this is an industry that screams more than anybody else for tolerance. You have to be tolerant. I love what he says at the end. This is an industry that screams tolerance and you, and yet you're not being tolerant. Evil for good and good for evil. But even their version of good is not consistent across the board. They don't even follow the false gospel of science established by their science god. In one situation, they were born this way, and in another situation, they deny the authority of the way that they were born. I was born gay, therefore, I should be the way that I was born, except when it has to do with transgenderism. 
love is love, be kind, be tolerant, except when you're Christian and you're saying anything that is in opposition to what we believe in what we're perpetuating. We don't want police, but why didn't the police show up to protect us? It's completely ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. We see it, but we have to call it out for what it is. We have to use the language that God has used in order to understand what's going on. Because if we start feeding in to all of this other propaganda by the people who are equally as dangerous, stating that this is a political thing, that it needs to be fought with the world, exposing it from a political perspective, we're going to have no understanding about what's going on. What good does it do us to say what you're doing is wrong, but to not stand on the authority of God and just stand on our own authority? What good does it do us? You see what's happening. You see that there are plenty of people who are saying this isn't okay. And they're arguing with the world and they're arguing with biology and science and law. Where are they getting? All it is is a means of entertainment. No one understands what they're supposed to be doing at this point in history, what they're supposed to be picking up. The time is short, that there's a covenant we're supposed to be fulfilling, that our deeds are unfinished in the sight of his God. No one has understanding. Just a bunch of entertainment. Just a bunch of self-righteous indignation against others without even realizing what we're doing. We're not in the right standing if that's what we're doing. I don't sit here on this channel just exposing people. I talk to you about what's going on so that you can understand the times so that you know what to do. That's what the sons of Issachar did. The sons of Issachar knew the times. They understood the times so that they knew what Israel ought to do. If you don't understand the times and you're fighting this by the world, all you're going to do is fight. You're going to have no peace. You're going to have no understanding. You're not going to know what you're called to do. And you're going to scramble around in vain because you will not enter into eternal life if you don't understand the times and you don't know what God's calling you into. This is a spiritual war. We don't contend with flesh and blood. We don't even contend with human rulers. That's not the problem. The problem that we're contending with are principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's what's inhabiting these people. And I know people think I'm, you know, some people think I'm nuts when I'm talking about spirit possession, but that's exactly what Christ told us was going to happen. When a spirit comes out of a person, when he drives a spirit out of a person, if that that spirit goes through arid places looking for rest, doesn't find it, comes back to the house, finds it unoccupied and swept clean, and brings with it seven more spirits more wicked than itself. And the reason that person was unoccupied, by the way, is because they didn't return to God. They didn't repent like Jesus told them to do. And so they're unoccupied. They don't have the spirit of God in them. They're not protected. And the final condition of that person, having seven more spirits, more wicked than itself, is worse than it was in the beginning. So it will be with this wicked generation. Nothing changed. We didn't develop diagnoses. We didn't de develop symptoms. Those diagnoses are just clusters of symptoms that a bunch of people sat around a table and said, hey, I'm seeing this. Hey, I'm seeing that too. All right, let's put a name on it. Does that make it a thing? Does it make it a thing because they put a name on it? And then now that it became a thing, now you have a treatment for it. Now you have a medication for it. Now you have a surgery for it. Christ said these are spirits. The symptoms are real. The diagnoses are not. And those diagnoses have been established in order to remove any power that you would have had. So to cause you to abdicate control over to heroes and idols and medicine in order to heal you. Not God. And in order to abdicate personal responsibility to defer that personal responsibility that you were created to have in order to pick up your covenant, in order to engage in a covenant and a relationship with Christ. And in handing that over and diagnosing yourself, now there's no responsibility. You know, I came across a video the other day because, you know, YouTube has this thing where they have like shorts and it, it, that's a TikTok thing. I've never been on TikTok ever in my life. So I'm probably going to sound like a dork right now. My kids are probably going to make fun of me because I don't use the right language and I don't understand what I'm talking about. When it comes to social media, I don't really necessarily see that as a bad thing. But you know, like if I click on like a recipe video or something, then the next video pops up. So I came across this video of a little boy who was hysterical, hysterically crying, having an absolute meltdown. 
This poor child was in so much distress. And you know what the mother's doing? She's filming him to put him on TikTok. And she's saying, this is what I go through every day with his autism. Right. Has nothing to do with your parenting and you sitting there filming your child instead of embracing him and parenting him and telling him it's going to be okay. How do you film your child when they're in that distress? How do you even post a video of your child for the entire world to see? Why are people like exploiting their children like this? And it causes me to wonder, is that diagnosis for you? Is it to excuse you from parental responsibility? You know, we would always have these pro- this issue in psycho- when I was in psychology where you have people who are like using drugs and frying their brain and now they get a diagnosis of like bipolar disorder or psychosis and they're not even sober. How can you get a clear picture of what's going on with someone when they're frying their brain with chemicals? And I would say the same thing about this. How, how do you, how, how, how are you putting this on your child? that they have a diagnosis when you're clearly a horrible parent, when you clearly don't care enough about your child to embrace them, but instead you think, I'm gonna pick up my phone and take a video of this kid to post on my social media later. And then I'm gonna sit and scroll through the comments about everyone feeling sorry for me because I have a child that I've labeled with a diagnosis to absolve me of my parental responsibility to actually be there for the child. How do you even put a diagnosis on a child who's in a bad situation like that? There's something else going on, you guys. Don't tell me that intergenerational curses, that intergenerational sin does not affect a child because that is clearly a deranged individual who would pick up a camera when their child is hurting instead of consoling their child to make fun of them, to pathologize them, to get likes and subscribers and sympathy for themselves. That is a sick, sick person who is abusing their child. That is emotional abuse. I just want to encourage you to think of these things for what they are, for what God told us they are, and stop deferring to the world to tell you what to think, that this is a diagnosis, that this is political, that this is mental illness, this is spiritual illness, this is spirit possession. That is what we're contending with. And we need to be holding people accountable for the, for the reason why that gets in to begin with. We need to be recognizing the times so that we know what Israel ought to do, what we ought to do and what we need to counsel others to do. And we don't go wasting our time trying to convince the world that they're evil. We spend our time with people of God helping them to stay on track because the world's already destined for destruction. So if you discern the spirit in another person, if you test that spirit and you see that they are not of God, have nothing to do with such people. I don't care what the message of the world is. I don't care what the message of Pope Francis is. I don't care that they say that you need to integrate those people, that you need to tolerate those people, that you need to not judge them. And by not judging them, they mean don't discern, don't think for yourself, don't listen to the Holy Spirit. I don't care if they call you a cult and say that you're alienating yourself from other people because you know what? God told you that you are a holy nation to him. You are supposed to be separated from them. You are not to join them. You are not brothers and sisters with them. Don't be deceived. If you speak on the word of God, if you believe the word of God, and that is the lens by which you are understanding the times, you won't be deceived and you will know what Israel ought to do. Thank you for listening. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.